this note, the focus of this lecture is going to be on business and equity valuations. We have already looked at the valuation of debt, the valuation of debentures, and preference shares when we covered our lecture on cost of capital. So if you need a recap on how to value debt, debentures, and preference shares, please go back to that lecture. In this lecture, we are only focusing on business and equity valuations. So what are the reasons why we would perform a business or an equity valuation? First, there might be an acquisition or disposal of a minority or majority interest in a business or the entire business. So what I'm talking about here is if you're a business owner and you are trying to sell your business, you're obviously going to have to know what the value of your business is in order to determine the selling price. Similarly, if you are looking at buying a business or buying a share in a business, you are going to need to know what that business is worth in order to determine the purchase price. Similarly, we might have a merger or acquisition by another business. So instead of an individual buying or selling an interest in a business, we have another company purchasing a company. And once again, we obviously need to know the value of the company in order to determine the purchase or the selling price. Then the company might be listing for the first time. And if they are listing for the first time, they are going to need to know what their listing share price is or their initial public offering. So when they list for the first time, what are they going to sell their shares at? So obviously they need to perform a business valuation so that they know what the company is worth in order to determine their initial public offering or the initial share price when they list for the first time. And then lastly, if a company requires a loan, they might have to give the business as security for the loan. And if you're going to give the business as security for the loan, we need to know what the business is worth because that will determine the value of the loan that the bank will be prepared to give you. So those are all of the reasons why we would perform a valuation. We are now going to look at the different valuation methodologies and methods. So first, if we are trying to value a company, we can look at the price of a recent investment, or we can use multiples, or we can look at discounted cash flows, and lastly, we can use the net asset value method. First, let's look at the price of a recent investment. And for this valuation methodology, I want you to assume that we own a small bakery in Santon and we are looking at selling the bakery. So if we use the price of a recent investment in order to try and value our bakery, that means we need to find a similar bakery in the same location that was also sold recently. So obviously this information is very hard to come by and that's why this valuation method is not used very often. Firstly, it's going to be difficult to find a similar bakery in the same location. And then in addition to that, that bakery must have been sold within a reasonable time frame. So for example, if we do have a bakery in the same location that was sold 10 years ago, we can't use that as the basis for determining the selling price for our bakery because too much would have changed in the last 10 years. So it's very difficult to use this valuation methodology when it comes to business or equity valuations. So you can see that discussion over here. The transaction date of the recent investment must be close to the date of the current valuation. Otherwise, the passage of time reduces the suitability of this methodology. So the bakery must have also been sold recently and not 10 years ago. So that's the first valuation methodology. And that is all we are going to discuss when it comes to the price of a recent investment. Please note that it is a methodology that we can use in order to value a business. However, you will not be required to perform any calculations around this valuation methodology. Then the next valuation methodology we are going to look at is multiples. And we can either perform valuations using earnings multiples or market price multiples. Then we are going to look at discounted cash flows. And discounted cash flows includes Gordon's dividend growth model, 
the free cash flow method, and also the EVA or the MVA. Please note that this is only applicable for level two students. And the last valuation methodology is net assets. And net assets can either be calculated using fair market values or liquidation values. Now guys, throughout the rest of our lecture, we are going to look at the calculations surrounding these valuation methodologies in more detail. Now if these are all of the various valuation methodologies and methods that are available, how do we know which method we should use? Now in practice, an appraiser is going to use his or her judgment in order to determine the most appropriate valuation methodology. However, guys, in your test or in your exam, it depends on the information that you are provided with. You need certain information in order to perform a valuation using earnings multiples. You need different information if you are using the free cash flow method. So it depends on the information available in the question. That will help you determine which valuation method you should use. However, please note that the principal valuation method should always be supplemented by another methodology as a reasonability test. So we would never just use one method and come up with a value and say that is the value of the business. We always need to perform a reasonability test. Now please note, the reasonability test can be any other valuation method. So maybe you use the free cash flow method as your principal valuation, and then as a reasonability test, you can maybe use the net asset value method. Or alternatively, we use earnings multiples as our principal valuation method, and then we use Gordon's dividend growth model as a reasonability test. Please note, you can see I'm selecting any methods. Any method can be used as your principal valuation, and any other method can be used as a reasonability test. In undergrad, you might have learned that net assets are used as a reasonability test, and that is true. Net assets can be used as a reasonability test, but please note it's not limited to net assets. Any other valuation methodology can be used as a reasonability test. Now before we look at each of the valuation methodologies in more detail, first we need to cover a few important principles which are going to affect all of the different valuation techniques. And the first thing that we need to look at is valuation premiums and discounts. Now the first type of valuation premium or discount is an entity level premium or discount. And on the next page you'll see we have owner level or shareholder premiums and discounts. Now I'm going to look at this in more detail when we actually get to an example because then it makes more sense. But for now, there's just a few things that I want you to understand. Please note, normally if we are trying to value a private company or an unlisted company, we often use the information from a similar listed company as a starting point. So you can see that just below. In order to value a private company, often information from a similar listed company is used as the starting point. However, there's obviously going to be differences between the company that we are valuing and the similar listed company. And these differences need to be adjusted for. Now the first type of difference that we look at are the entity level premiums and discounts. And please note, these adjustments are made to the multiple, the WAC, or the cost of equity. On the other hand, if we look at the next page, here we are dealing with owner level or shareholder premiums and discounts. And please note, these adjustments are made to the final market value of equity calculated. So for now, I just want you to understand that we have two different types of premiums and discounts. First, we have entity level premiums or discounts, and these adjustments are made to the multiple, the WAC, or the cost of equity. And second, we have owner or shareholder premiums and discounts, 
and these adjustments are made to the final market value of equity. So there are two different types of premiums and discounts, and they affect our calculations in different ways. This will make more sense when we actually look at an example. We then need to look at some important terminology. Market capitalization is just the market value of equity. So if we are trying to calculate the market value of equity of a listed company, we can just take the listed or the quoted share price and multiply that by the number of shares in issue. If we are dealing with an unlisted or a private company, obviously we won't have a listed share price, so we'll have to use one of the valuation methodologies in order to come up with the value of equity. But market capitalization is just the value of equity. On the other hand, the overall firm value is the value of debt and equity. In other words, it is the value of the company's assets. So please remember, this is why our statement of financial position balances, because we know assets equal equity plus liabilities. So if the overall firm value is the value of my debt and equity, that must be the total value of the company's assets. Then lastly, the market value of invested capital. This is also the value of assets. However, we exclude any non-operating assets. So we are looking at the value of the company's operating assets. So you can see we just take the value of debt and equity, or in other words, the overall firm value, We exclude any non-operating assets, and that will leave us with the value of our operating assets. Now, please make sure you are comfortable with this terminology. You'll see when we are looking at the various different valuation methodologies, the different methodologies give us different values. So it's very important that you understand whether a specific valuation method is designed to determine the value of equity, the overall firm value, or the market value of invested capital.